and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building upon our video from last week and we are going to add thumbnails to our PVA Bot Framework Composer chatbot. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So last week's video, and I suggest you do check it out, I'll include a link in the description. We do go through some of the benefits of using Bot Framework Composer integration with Power Virtual Agents. And today what we're going to do is further discuss one of those benefits and that's providing rich user experiences. Now on top of that, like you can achieve some of what we're going to do today using Power Automate and Markdown, but the Bot Framework Composer provides us with additional capabilities and richer capabilities. Uh, we haven't discussed adaptive cards just yet and I know I've had quite a few questions and comments related to that. I'll get to that as well in an upcoming video, but this is really just scratching the surface and just giving you some more extensibility and richer user experiences. And actually it goes much beyond what we're talking about here. And certainly in Power Automate, we wouldn't have the ability to go ahead and provide that level of richness. In addition, when dealing with Power Automate, you're also going to be dealing with probably a little bit more latency in terms of how you go ahead and call that flow and, and essentially assemble all of those various actions in order to return that data. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless 360, a portal that is focused on operations and support for Microsoft Azure Serverless resources. Now, this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal, and it helps organizations in supporting Azure Serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so let's talk just a little bit about cards. This comes from the Microsoft documentation. Link will be in the description if you wanna check it out. Essentially, what cards are gonna give you is the ability to include visual, audio, and or selectable messages that help with your conversation flow. And so it's one of those things where if you need to display a collection of items, like a carousel of cards, and those cards can contain, say, image plus text, plus a single selection button, you're going to get a more immersive experience. And so certainly this is one of the benefits of using Bot Framework Composer is you can't really do this today with Power Virtual Agents. You're generally bound to text and also buttons if you use like the multiple choice options, but we certainly would have more control and can really just provide a more immersive experience. Now the card that we're gonna look at more specifically is the thumbnail card. And so when we go ahead and include this snippet of text inside of a send a response action, we have the ability to populate these different attributes like our title, subtitle, our text, an image, and then also buttons if we want. And when we go ahead and include this, we're going to get that more immersive experience. And so as part of our, our demo, I'm gonna show you how you can go ahead and do that. And to be able to do that more in a static fashion, but also in a dynamic fashion, like we can see here in this specific screenshot. So let's go ahead, let's jump right into that demo. Okay, so here we are, we're in Power Virtual Agents Maker Portal. I still have my trigger, which is going to go ahead and call my Bot Framework Composer dialog. And so I can't uh, make many changes here, but this is how this will go ahead and get triggered. So I'm gonna run through the demo so you can see it, and then I'll go step by step in terms of how I was able to go ahead and build this. So I'm just gonna say, you know, just type in weather. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and call into our bot framework composer dialog and then return our first thumbnail card. And so this thumbnail card is static. I've included, you know, an image that I use on my blog, plus I've got some additional text just outlining what this bot can go ahead and do. So really two actions. Let's start with about, it's less interesting um, than the other, but what I'm gonna do is when I click this button, you can see that about gets basically sent as a response back to the bot. 
And when we're in Buffer or Composer, I'm going to show you how we have a trigger that essentially is listening to a phrase that includes about. And when that happens, we're going to go ahead and call that trigger and then provide a response. In this case, it's really just, you know, some static test text about where we're going and retrieving this data. Now what we can go ahead and do is we can go ahead and either type in show weather or even click show weather. And this is now going to, once again, inside of our bot from framework composer bot, going to now call a trigger that will be listening for show weather and route us to a specific dialogue where we're going to ask for a specific zip code. Now, the thumbnail that I'm going to show you here is one that's going to be dynamic. We're going to use the payload from a backend service that we can refer to in our response and as a result have some more dynamic capabilities or experiences. So let's start off with a zip code. Let's do Kirkland, Washington. So we would expect this to be probably a little cold, cloudy, 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if we wanna go ahead and check out perhaps a place that's a little bit warmer. Let's go ahead and send Hawaii. And so Hawaii, let's go ahead, although it will be very early in the morning, let's go ahead and send Hawaii. And we can see it's 70 degrees and oh, it's, it's raining, um, but we can see that our icon has changed as a result. And then lastly, let's go to a place that is typically known for being very cold, and that would be North Dakota in the US and it's 25 degrees. So that's pretty cool in the sense that if we have some sort of backend data source where the images will change, uh, we can dynamically set these values and see more immersive experiences. And it just adds a nice little touch to what we're going to go ahead and provide our users. So let's go ahead, let's take a look at the Bot Framework Composer and how we went about doing this. So I already have Buffer Composer installed and what will happen is I'm launching it from Power Virtual Agents Maker Portal. I will get prompted to provide some credentials, the same credentials that I'm using to access the Power Virtual Agent service itself. At this point it's going to connect and it's essentially going to be able to sync my data, sync my data from essentially the cloud back down to our tool itself. So let's go ahead, let's start with our bot. This is essentially our initial trigger. Uh, this essentially is much like our greeting. And if you recall back inside of Power Virtual Agents, I did have a couple trigger phrases. And as I, when I started typing to trigger my bot, I selected weather. I typed in weather, that's how this was launched. And then here is I went and sent a response. It's going to be a thumbnail and then I can go ahead and include data that I want to include in that specific card. Plus, in this case, I have a link for that logo that is on my blog. So I'm going to refer to some sort of URL. Now, you may also recall I had two buttons. I had show weather, I had about. And what I can do is I can include multiple buttons by essentially using uh, basically this line character and go ahead and I could add another one here if I wanted to and you know, add third button if I, if I wanted to include a third button. But we're not gonna do that, we won't worry about that. So that's essentially how we can create a static thumbnail. Now, what I also have created is I've created two additional triggers. Now, when I go ahead and click on that show weather, this trigger will get kicked off. And as a result of this trigger getting kicked off, I'm going to go ahead and call a dialogue. So if I go click on dialogue management, begin a new dialogue, I have the ability to select one from essentially a list of dialogues that exist. Now, the only other dialogue I do have here is call weather. And so that's why I'm only seeing one of those launched. Let's just take a quick look at about trigger. So if we go ahead and type about, this is what we're going to do. Since it's a very simple response, I'm not going to go create a dialogue and then call a dialogue. I will just send a response due to its simple nature. But if we head back to our weather trigger, so when we type in show weather, we will go ahead and route to this specific dialogue. Now this dialogue is going to be 
very similar to what we went through last week. So I'm not going to go through all of this step by step. I encourage you to go check out that specific video to get more information. But what we do know is when we go ahead and call this API and essentially pass in our zip code, it's going to provide a message payload. Now I have copied that payload just into Notepad so that we can take a closer look at this. Now, as part of this payload, we can go ahead and see that we do have a link to a specific icon. And so this is going to represent that clouds icon that we saw when we went ahead and provided our input, the zip code for Kirkland itself. Here, we also have the ability to see the weather itself. So we've got the temperature, which is the current temperature, which is what we also go ahead and display. And what we can do is now use these values in our thumbnail card so that makes it dynamic. So that's why when we went ahead and provided the zip code for Hawaii, we saw a different icon, in this case our image, being updated and of course our temperature being updated as well. And so this is a good way to be able to tap into backend data and have more of that dynamic experience inside of your, your chatbot. So yeah, that concludes the video. Next up, as I said, we'll take a closer look at adaptive cards where we can use sort of a different type of card and to get an even more immersive experience. But this will allow you to have some dynamic abilities and provide a richer experience when using your Bot Framer Composer with Power Virtual Agents. All right, so thanks for checking out another video on the channel. Appreciate all of the support. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to go do so. You can find me at Weirzy. Naturally, likes, subscribes, comments are all welcome as well. And take care, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. See ya.